Welcome back to Disco, guys. So we we found our way inside the apartment complex last time. We spoke to uh, the guy with the open shirt who was smoking, Martin Martinez, although that's not his real name. Um, so he knows something, or the person he was with on the the day that the murder happened knows something. Uh, we need to locate him. We gained access to some of the apartments. We met the old cleaning lady. Um, and we, we investigated a lot more of the murders to do with the truck, but we messed up a bit there. Um, we, we, the information needs to come from the from the racist no-chin guy. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in huh. other words. Inspect the symbol closer. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. Why is the star upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. Right. What about the antlers? Some, uh, is that kind of... Um... What would you call it? Oh, my mind's just gone black. <laughs> just gone black. <laughs> like, like, um, demonic. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society right. that could exist in accord with the natural world, and at the same time, above it. And why white? Because white is the color of peace. What does it evoke in me? Smug superiority, aesthetic musings, the triumph of capital is undeniable, but maybe the guns were sort of cool. Revolutionaries had loads of guns. Whatever kid drew this graffiti will get it one day. You just can't beat freedom and hustle jiggling all the time. This pentagram here. Hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do now, I will come back and investigate this stuff more, but... Uh, we're just gonna gonna go uh, we're gonna go and try and get a knight's kip at the whirling in rags. We're gonna have to have smooth talk guard. Uh, with our suggestion up a little bit, maybe that'll work. Who knows? Uh, but that's what we need to do, just because that's what Kimmy asked us to do, and it might mean we can lose him for a bit and go and do some unpleasant activities without him. And we're probably gonna have some sort of nightmare, right? At least the net's gone to bed. Not out selling books past at midnight, right? Might be some more people in here now, though. I don't know how you'd get around. Oh, we can sing. Hey, God. Can I help you? About the money I owe. Yes. Have you got it? I was wondering if we could come to some sort of arrangement for tonight. Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? I'll pay you back tomorrow. I'm an honest cop. I can't promise that. It's cold. I'll freeze to death because I'm losing the stupid money game. Come on, man. After everything I've been through. Kim's about to say something. I understand your predicament as the manager. However, he adjusts his glasses. I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking and... He stops mid-sentence. He shrinks back a bit under the lieutenant's severe gaze. I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. This conversation's not going anywhere. Not until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. He turns to you with a heavy sigh. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant. We're done here. There's probably a way around this, isn't yes. there? Yes. Have you got it? Yes. 
Another thing. Great. I love those. Yes. Uh, Kim's offered to help. Go to his motor carriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't talk to any of the folks here. Can we still steal from that guy? Yeah. <laughs> Our morale is quite high at the minute, right? I love the car design, the motor carriage design. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. Look in the suspect transport enclosure. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. Their silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated these four a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. Uh, what are they? Wheel caps? They are spinner hubcaps. Frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. So you've been stealing evidence or something? A vanity he wouldn't mind. Honestly, that sounds like an amazing physics demonstration. You confiscated them? A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. <laughs> Turns out he was some coalition official's son and hired. So you took his spinners? Mm -hmm. I took them and arrested him for driving under the influence. I get it. That they are. I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. Didn't you want to put them on yours? No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spinners. That would be outrageous. Fair enough. The spinners shine so bright they reflect on the lieutenant's glasses. He doesn't say anything either. We've been to the pawn shop. I appreciate. Um. I mean, what's the alternative, right? He's offering to help, but he obviously maybe wants the money himself. He's planning to sell them himself. It's kind of risky him having them anyway, though, right? I think this might damage our esprit de... Will it damage our esprit de corps? I don't know. I imagine there was a line of questioning with Gart that meant we would be able to convince him. I perhaps should have just threatened him by saying I still have the keys. There's no alternative though, right? I mean, it's 130 real. Um, we're gonna owe him one though, right? So... I mean, we've come across so little money though. I mean, when are we gonna be able to earn it? Like, what was it? 130 real? I don't know what to do. Now you earn this, man. What about the pawn shop? Yes, the bird's nest Roy, near the canal. We've been there. If I'm not mistaken, it should be open late. I don't know, it just makes you feel like a right sponge taking them, you know? We we do we are in need of some help, but I don't know. I kind of want to let him have them. Uh, 
Uh, this is what I'm like with decisions, guys. Sorry. Um. I don't want him to be offended, is what I mean, by refusing them. But I also don't want him to feel like he's in control and that we need to be babied. But we do kind of need to be babied at the minute. Yeah, I, I don't really want to take them. It, it would be right, Kimmy. All right. Let's not take them now. Then come back once we realize we have to have this conversation again and then take them. <laughs> Fine. The page at the... I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. I, the uh, I not, appreciate. As you take the spinners. I appreciate your help. All right, let's go. It didn't really matter in the end. Oh, hello. All right. Yeah, I don't know how much of a tutorial companion Kimmy is. It does seem like he's a bit more permanent for the case. I don't know if this case is going to finish at some point, you know? Oh, yeah. You're worth 200. Fair enough. Greetings on this fine night. What brings you here? Uh, it's cool that you're open. The pawn shop is always open. Uh, how do I... S oh, there we go. How yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. The lieutenant steps in and hands him the spinners. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 real. Suggestion. Come on, let's get some more money. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. The lieutenant explains as the pawnbroker opens the register and counts the cash. Of course. I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Damn it. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. Takes the cash, then turns to you. Here's the 130 real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. The rest goes in his pocket. The windfall is a small consolation. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Um, Anything else you're thinking of selling? No. Another time, perhaps. Yeah, this has gone up a bit. Hmm. Sure to thing. Oh, let's talk about something else. Sure, I, thought, man. I thought that meant there was something new. Okay, let's go and pay guard. We haven't picked up a map, have we? Uh, there was some other stuff in here, though. Wow, a very large red t shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other guard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The print depicts a muscled man striding toward you. A giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. <laughs> Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Hyeondal burning. Sniff it. Smells like worn cotton and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Sniffing is okay, but please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the oh, fabric emissions. of things you're not going to buy. You're not imagining it. Photon emissions? What is he talking about? 
That's a cool shirt then, mate. Hell yeah, man. I don't usually carry printed tees, but this one was just pure exemplar. You must be a big fan. A fan? No, I wouldn't go that far. But I do think the Hyam Dalaman saga is an integral part of our shared reality. Okay, dude, lay off the drugs. Right. <laughs> Most people don't think that the man from Hyamdal really existed, but they're wrong. He was real? I mean, even if the man from Hyamdal didn't exist before the adventure novels, the stories have made it so that he has. It's simple, really. Collective consciousness kind of thing. Okay. He sounds incredulous. You sound skeptical. It's not that complicated. All that's required is a more robust understanding of cause and effect. Besides, I've been to Kotla, though not quite as far north as the Hjelmdal, and watched northern lights travel across the sky. Very unique energetic tides there. Very, very unique energies, indeed. Geomagnetic ley lines, one might even say. How much is it going for? Probably a lot. Two real. What? That's dirt cheap. Couldn't I just have it for free then? But why? Maybe I could repay you some other way. Our dealing goods, not services. Minus two to authority, plus one to physical instrument, plus one to shivers. Yeah, it's only two, right? And my authorities, I, I don't really like my authority too much. It's only two, right? And it gets us our Savile Fair back. Welcome to Hjelmdal, officer. Our shirt. Conceptualization, I guess I'm not too bothered about that. Authority is not looking too hard. That's on a two now, right? Yeah. Our sub affair. Oh, what? What else is getting our sub affair? Oh, it wasn't the shirt, was it? Suggestion. I'm happy to get the suggestion back, though. We need some more trousers. Yeah, I really want to be able to be to schmooze my way out of stuff, you know? To be able to talk, you know, use suggestion, use a bit of self-affair. That helps with stealth and, you know, being being a bit cool, you know. I think that would tie into empathy a bit if we're on some, if we're on the level with people, you know. Just having no authority is a little risky for interrogations and stuff. It means we need to maybe stay on people's good side a bit more. Rather than like, you know, like with the racist lorry driver, we can't really be opposed to people too too strongly all right you leech i've got some money can i help you about the money yes have you i've well? got it i hope you choke on it <laughs> i'm not apologizing there you go great thank you officer that's all i wanted Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. I'll unlock the electronic lock to your room. All the doors lock automatically at 9 p.m. He taps his foot against a metal box installed in the back bar counter. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. I'll take a room here too. He opens his wallet. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? No. All right. Okay, so 20 real. I mean, that's not going to be too easy, especially if we keep buying clothes, but... Sorry, cop for five. Oh man, <laughs> one for boring cop. Oh no! Oh, the ultra liberal's gone up. None for honor. Ouch! All right, we've got a skill point. Now we could use that here, right? Uh, is there any of these that we want? Oh god! Oh god!
finger pistols. And if we want to unequip, that costs a skill point as well. So they don't tend to benefit the thing that they're taking away from, do they? I mean, why do you have to use a skill point to forget it? That's, I find that a bit strange, but... So, sh minus one to shivers might mean a psyche skill might benefit. South of fair... Hmm, that's probably going to benefit reflexes or um, hand-eye coordination, maybe. Minus one to authority, we might gain one in suggestion or self affair maybe. I think that might benefit self affair Hmm, cold-blooded. I don't like minus two to empathy for any period of time. It's only an hour and 45, though. Um, Self-critique. Guilt-ridden past. Hmm. Might just take a flat stat increase for the time being. So uh, I said I was going to go drama, right? Being able to lie would be useful, right? Yeah. Right. I'm down with that. Right, let's catch some shut eye. Um, what could I do while Kimmy's asleep? I could go and break into that apartment. And I could steal that guy's ID tag. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Good night, Kimmy. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. All right. We need the a new air jacket. Outside right? is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. He likes a cigarette. So what are our powers exactly? The RCM. They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with the mental departmental schedule. Uh, wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Why not more than a thousand? The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of the national. And what else then? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station closely. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Okay, so what if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. So, um, what if I kill someone? You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is okay. hard to cover for anyone. Yeah, I get it, mate. Best. You're not going to cover for me. So what about the convicts? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government forts in Couron and La Delta. 
The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. He taps on his coat pocket where he keeps his notes. So who makes the rules here then, if they're being judged in other places besides Revachol? The coalition government and the moral intern. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. He, his gaze is absently fixed on a window below that just went dark. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Kalashol or the coalition government founded the RCM. Okay. So what if it was the citizens? Be sentimental if you like. Either way, the Moralinton leases us the right to keep the peace in this city. Then they will take it away if we misuse it. Didn't know you smoke, Kimmy. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Okay. One a day. Suppose that's not going to do too much harm. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. I think I might want to pick up smoking. Do you have any more cigarettes? No, that's not bomber cig. Right then. Yes. It's been a long and even full day. How do you think today went? Well, you were so hungover that you couldn't keep it down when we approached the hanged man. So we didn't even inspect the body. Yes. And there's still much to do at the crime scene too. We didn't search it thoroughly enough. You would have put all of this more harshly. But he doesn't want you to feel completely discouraged. Probably because he's afraid that you'll just give up and keep drinking. Don't worry, Kim. I'll be in much better shape tomorrow. It's all part of the plan, starting from the outside and working back toward the scene of the murder. I'm sorry I couldn't do more today. I'm just not a very good cop, am I? Say nothing, just look at the city. I don't think he's really interested in platitudes, so... Say nothing. As for the interviews, yes, we weren't able to find the union leader, Emma no. Claire, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We tried to interview the Wild Pan's rep, but she asked us to do something for her first. Fine, so be it. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. He purses his lips. Above all, though, today was exhausting. <laughs> What's with all the running? You run a lot. <laughs> Is that a standard prison 41 practice? I don't like to waste time, you know. My mind moves fast. The rest has to try to keep up. I'm training for a long distance run. I want to raise money for charity. Yeah, that's just how we roll in precinct 41. I don't know why I do the things I do, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I don't know. It's impressive, to say the least. For a man your age, especially. He nods thoughtfully, tapping his finger on his cigarette. Those are some stylish shoes, too, by the way. Those loafers. It must be hard to run indoors like you do. He smiles suddenly. I don't appreciate that, buddy. Even though I like your jacket. The Moral... The Moral Intern. What's that? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. Right. If I didn't know, how would you describe them? I really don't know. That's how bad it is in here. They're a union of centre-left and centre-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organisations in the world. So it's like a huge world-controlling conglomerate, I guess. What do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are DeLoreans. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. And what's their sign? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something ominous. Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. And who is Dolores Day? A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. What do you think of the... Of the... Oh god, I've just forgotten what they were called. Mm. 
ba, 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 what was it called? Moral intern. The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And he looks at the city look below. That's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. So you like them? Yes, I did when I was younger. In my 20s, I considered myself a moralist, a blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky. They're not all that bad. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. Interesting. Well, I've got an opinion myself. Do you? Lieutenant arches his brow, then pulls on his cigarette. It's a slim, white thing in his fingers. Things are bad out there, point to the city. We need them here, giving us the right to police Revachon. They've done an awful job here. Have you seen the place? This isn't humanism. We're the stooges of the world's biggest bourgeois organization protecting bourgeois rights. Mutter silently, immigrants, liberal kips, fucking men are turning into women. On second thought, I don't have an opinion. Forget about it. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's funny because, you know, people with more extreme political beliefs are always very scathing towards centrists, right? And he described uh, the moral Linton as centre-left and centre-right as a coalition, right? And people kind of hate a lot of people. I mean, especially in the internet age, right? Pe people always want to take sides a lot more than in the past. Um, and... I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with centrism. As long as it's, you know, logical centrism, as long as it's not centrism that's just there to avoid taking a stance, you know, like fence sitting. But, um. So things are bad out there, yeah, but uh, we need them here, giving us the right to police Ravish, police Ravish all. And I'm not saying that it's a reason to say it, but that kind of get, uh, gets us to agree with Kimmy. Um. So I'd rather not take an extreme side, and I, I don't want to uh, say Kip. Kips is like almost like I know there's no Asia here, but that sounds like Asian race or an Asian racist word, does it? Because the 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 truck driver guy was saying Kips to describe uh, Sealeng and and people like that, right? Yeah, uh, we, we need them. In fact, we would need them even if you didn't think that way. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the EMI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Maybe we should make our own law. Vigilant vigilante sounds bad. Actually, vigilantes is okay with me. But the gov people govern themselves. People governing themselves would be bad. Maybe we should make our own law. Um, I don't know. Vigilantes are only ever a thing for a very short period of time, right? Yeah, vigilantes sound bad. Sadly, it is what we already are to the people of Martinez. Mm. Most of them, at least, especially the Union. Vigilantes. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. He looks at the roundabout. Let's just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid. <laughs> You know, it's different in land, in Jamrock, in the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the yep. union, to the yep. company, not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks, the jurisdictions of our two precincts. I mean, it, it's kind of something, that's kind of the thing that's happened in England a little bit is after... Um, Theresa May cut the funding to the police force back in 2012 
uh, was it 2012 or 2009? One of the two when she was in charge. That's when she, you know, long before she was prime minister or anything. You know, they warned that the lack of a police presence in communities can result in, you know, a disconnect from because it's important for a police officer to be in a community and to know the dynamics, um, know who might be being radicalized by whatever politically or any other form of radicalization or, you know, just, pe you know, knowing the community, know where there's trouble. And as a result of the budget cuts, like the lack of a police presence is just me means that there's a lack of information and they're, they're putting all this emphasis on just knowing things online and online monitoring rather than actually knowing people and yeah doesn't result in good things uh, and in Jamrock and the and the GRIH we run this city west of the river is our CMM he looks at the dark silhouette of the equestrian monument cutting into the night sky it's incredibly hard human beings are he shakes his head we are in control and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Okay, he believes in the system. Night. Captain Ptolemy Price steps into the yard. A piebald horse waits by the motor carriage, chewing oats out of an oat bag. Seagulls fly overhead. The sky is black. Captain Price wears a black suit and a standard patrol coat. As he mounts the horse to head home, Rows of houses on either side, hunching over the sidewalks, and Precinct 41, with its dome roof growing distant. Around him, the streets are silent. A kid on the corner waves at the captain as he takes the turn on Petition and Main. The horse neighs. The captain nods back. Captain Ptolemy Price. Thanks, kid. He thinks he's grateful. I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. He is very tired. But the dark circles under his eyes make him look younger, not older. I wouldn't count on any drastic change in our lifetimes. There's that quote in, in Cloud Atlas, you know? What you're doing will be nothing but a drop in an ocean. What is an ocean? But a multitude of drops, right? Change only happens slowly as long as you do lots of small things, right? Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. Puts out the stub of the cigarette and looks to the door. Most checks have secret difficulty modifiers. Talking to the right person can reopen a closed white check. All right, I'm going to take your advice there, Kimmy, and I'm going to walk. See you in the morning, Kimmy. All right, has anything shown up here? Oh, we didn't check the couch. The bed is cold and not oh, particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Not just yet. Is that another door? There's no... wait. Is that the door to Kimmy's room? A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Um, let's try and fix the faucet, yeah. The faucet is quite terribly mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognisable shape. The steam stops. Told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Okay, we can't we can't succeed at that. Okay, we're on the clock here. So um it's resting is just gonna top up our morale, right? 
Uh, so before we go to bed, let's do what we might do in real life before we go to bed. There's, it's almost like a survival element to this, right? Having to rest and being on the timers and stuff. We're going to read. We're going to do a bit of reading. Have a nice read before bedtime. <laughs> Book 16 Days of Coldest April. The cover features a row of concrete buildings with a monochrome rainbow in the sky. It tells a rather excruciating story about two lovers during a period of ethnic unrest in Yugo Grad. The book has been filed under psychological realism. In your hands you hold 16 Days of Coldest April by Yekatina Dahl. The cover image shows a row of concrete apartments above which span a black and white rainbow. Indeed, the book is unusually heavy in your hands, as though the cover were lined with lead. Black and white rainbow, so it suggests that a big city living kind of removes colour from the world, I guess. You know, that's maybe the metaphor. Who would do that in Grad? <laughs> Fair enough. How long is this book, anyway? You flip through the book. The pages are thinner than you realised, and the type quite small and tightly set. It's nearly 600 pages long. Let's look at the blurb. The back cover is dominated by a black and white photograph of the author. What she look like? She can't be much older than her mid-thirties in this photograph. And yet, from this cover, the eyes of a sad old woman stare back at you. Tortured soul, perhaps. Start reading. In cold, detached prose, the author describes a scene from one of the Hugo Grad riots in the 20s. Youths overturn motor carriages and set trash cans ablaze, while heavily armored guardsmen dash in and disperse them in a flurry of baton blows. As ethnic tensions run wild, a pair of young lovers meet each other on the street. Somehow, in the middle of all the chaos, they manage to lock arms and look into each other's eyes. What next? It would physically hurt you to keep reading. Are you sure? Let's read a bit more. Uh, what? How do I heal? You feel something in your chest. Oh, and unnatural pressure. Bollocks. It's spread into your left arm. How do we heal? Jaw. I'm sure it's just heartburn. No. It's many years of combined self-neglect and self-abuse. Let's try and remain All conscious. All you feel is pain and weakness. You... Have you died again? Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCM passed away. How far back has this gone, dude? We finished our briefing. Okay, that's not too bad. Well, that means I'm going to have to do the roll again on the fixing the sink. Flipping egg. I need to be auto saving way a lot more than I am doing, man. I just forget. You're trying to get immersed and stuff. I don't want to have to keep jamming F5. Night again, Kimmy. Night, Kimmy. Uh, let's try and fix this again. If this fails, I'll be upset. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. The faucet is quite Thank new. Thank you. The chain. Told you that you. The mirror begins to clear slowly. Right. So how do we heal? We've got five health charges, but we've only got one health bar. Ha Am I, like, missing a button prompt? How do we heal? Um, how do we heal? As if I don't know this. Uh, I guess I just can't read that book because I need to, uh... I need to have more than one health, right? Um, let's 
Uh, we had an item that increased endurance, I think. No. Alright, book. Another time. We need to just increase our endurance just by a pip. By one. Right. So if we've got five health charges, doesn't that mean we should be able to heal? Do I just need to click that when, when it hurts? Let's just try Let's try again. Let's try again. And I'll... Let me bloody save it first. In your hands, you hold. Yeah, Indeed. it feels heavy. Who would do that in Grom? How long? You flip through the book. Look at the back, the back cover. cover. Yes. She can't be much older. Start cold, reading. Detached as ethnic tent. What happens it would next? Physically hurt you to keep Read up. more. They go through a brief and somewhat awkward love affair. And Thank in you. the end, they betray each other and succumb to the absurdity of Guardian life. The man becomes a lens grinder, completely abandoning his former existence. Right, sorry guys. Uh, I'll leave that in because I was saying what I was going to do. We just need to click it then. I didn't realize that. So we can heal our morale as well. So we just need to click this. Um, they go through a brief and somewhat awkward love affair and in the end they betray each other and succumb to the absurdity of gradient life. The man becomes a lens grinder, completely abandoning his former existence. He toils through the daily drudgery at the Lenka Polyfabricate. Happiness and fulfillment have eluded him his whole life. And, in the end, he has nothing to do but dedicate himself to the craft. And the woman, I'm guessing, it affects their relationship? She spends the next several decades standing at a conveyor in a Sosnovor fish processing plant. The smell of fish guts slowly seeps into her hair and skin as every single one of her dreams dies one by one the memory of their short time spent together tortures the former lovers ceaselessly until the end of their days years pass in solitude their bodies growing ever more decrepit i want to keep reading though as life leaves their remains between the soil sheets their final thoughts are filled with regret. In cold, detached as Sorry. tension, it would physically hurt you to keep re- You've made the right life choices today, sir. Oh. So I technically read the whole thing, right? No? <laughs> kind of reminds me a bit at the end of- I don't know if you guys have seen Sinek de Key in New York. Fantastic film. But it's a film that's kind of enveloped by depression. But the, uh, the ending monologue is something very special. Uh, oh, we can analyze this again, maybe. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Assess the damage. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. With our shoe. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. Who did it then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It Assess. is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're Assess. looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The shoe you found on the balcony fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations, you smashed the window with your own shoe. What a stupid thing to do. Pretty much. But hey, at least you found your shoe. Not that it will keep you warm at night. <sighs> right, let's have a nice night's sleep then. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Let's crawl in. I'm not going to do this every night. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. Sorry if it annoyed you that I didn't know how to heal, guys. And then it's sleep gonna happen. doesn't come. Oh, no. A nightmare? And then sleep doesn't come. 
Okay, maybe this is where we interact with our psyche and the mammalian brain. Not mammalian, the triune brain, the reptilian, paleo, and the neo, right? Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Roll over. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? You killed him. Something to do with... What was it that the lieutenant said? Yeah. Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. Let's fall asleep now. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images, images start forming. Are we in control? Okay, this is a dream. Or a memory, at least. Yeah, us hanging from the tree by a disco ball. What is this? What it says on the can, Harry. Harry? Answer the question. I don't remember. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? Tell me what this is. I'm not answering before you tell me who you are. Who? My wife? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs? And in her mouth. I was left. Did I leave? Oh no. Funky baby. You stayed. It was the rest of it that left. While you just stood there. With one hand on the bottle. And the other on your dick. Watching it go. Tell me. Where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? We can redeem ourselves, maybe. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. Well, you're the reptilian brain from the sounds of things, so you're not really someone I'm care about failing to be honest you failed Elysium Elysium? everything the pale and the isolas on the surface the outer magnetosphere burning furious truth 8,000 years of written history you really dropped the ball Harry 4.6 billion people, and you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. So I've seen you before. No, you haven't. You're just sleep talking, and the act is wearing thin too. The spots on the disco ball fade around you. You'll be back in those cold snakeskins in no time. Sweating up the bed. Stinky boy. I can still come back. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? I've got to solve the case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet. Grinding in your head. 
So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. There's another type? Oh yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head. Like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. And where's the neo mammalian brain? We've got reptilian and limbic system is representing the paleo, right? So good going, buddy. Oh god, what the hell was that? I just had the most beautiful dream, uplifting, rejuvenating. Is that how it is that how it's going to be now when I close my eyes? Yes. Wait till you see the one with the chick in it. It's gonna be a good one. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. Oh, what chick? You don't know. You don't know. Some brawl that messed you up. It'll come to you. It always does. So what's going on with me, buddy? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. So is this happening because of the woman? It's just that your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. I'm alright, thanks. Don't do that. Stay strong. Yeah. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. Yeah. Let's go with Volition. I think we should try and be a bit straight edge. Let's not give in to Electrochem. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days. Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. I mean, this electrochemistry is very much like the the voice of, of the phrase, life is short, right? Life is short, we all die, and we might die soon. So why not? drink smoke and do drugs right we might why not have a good time because this is all temporary that is that voice i don't necessarily like that again i've not even heard from you guys at this point because i'm a bit ahead with episodes obviously this is going to result in a thought isn't it but i can do this without the speed Suit yourself slow sad shell man see how you do without your spark We'll see. Okay. I like that. All psyche learning caps. That makes us very strong. Learning cap for perception. That's good. All endurance white cre white checks unlocked. Learning cap for endurance raised to four. So then that's pretty good as well, right? Because it means our health can bump, get bumped up. So I'm going to put a point into endurance next, so we're not always one away from death. Um, all right, let's get going, Kimmy. Should we go talk to Clashy? The door is closed. That's not. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. Let's swallow the emotion. The door is closed. Still no answer. All right, let's leave her. I don't know where Kimmy is, but he's probably downstairs. 
He'll have started earlier than us, of course. <laughs> okay. Hey, all the dot workers having breakfast. All right, guys. Good morning, Kimmy. Uh, I'm going to leave that episode there in a second. Yeah, I'll leave that. I'll just leave it there now. I was going to do a little summary of our first day, everything that I can remember we've learned, because my memory doesn't always remember stuff. So I, t I tend to do quite a lot of summaries. So uh, we'll do that in the next episode at the start. So I hope you enjoyed this one. We've um, we died again, but I now understand that just pressing that heals us. So bear with me. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, we had a little nice little summary with Kimmy. We've got to know him a little bit better. He helped us out by paying our paying our um, outstanding money to to the bartender here, to uh, Gart. Um, we read an interesting book that was again quite morose, very um, Russian novel esque, right? Um, and uh, yeah, we've rested up. We had another interaction with our psyche. We've had another mention of the, the, the woman who's broken our hearts or has died or something. So, so, yeah. We'll pick it up here in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Just remember, everybody, never trust an uncrate. See you back in Revishon.